Okay, I think we're going to get started, guys. Thank you again to everyone for joining. My name is Dave Piper. I'm a culinary specialist for Cisco. I work on the in the uh, Ontario South region. And uh, thank you for joining, and thank you to everyone that joined us for our first uh, Cisco Ontario South uh, at the table. That was uh, we did reopen ready. And so, if you're joining us again, thank you so much. Uh, you're in for a treat today. We have a really good show for you. Good workshop. Um, we're talking about RTU and Speed Scratch. So. Those might be that might be foreign to some of us. And uh, so what is RTU? Well, RTU stands for ready to use. So we're going to be talking about ready to use products. And what is speed scratch? Speed scratch is essentially taking a pre done product, like a ready to use product and putting your own personal touch on it, maybe using a fresh ingredient. I'll give you an example of that. Taking a powdered hollandaise sauce uh, and then adding a little bit of tarragon to it or doing just doing a different uh, take on it. And all of a sudden you have Bernays, uh, but you're using a ready to use product and you're doing a speed scratch take on it. Okay. I'm going to give you a few facts about, you know, it, today, what this is about as well, it's, it's information and it's our industry is shifting. And this is a, a piece of the puzzle that can really a tool that can help you. And I'm going to give you a few facts right now. I'm going to read them here. So, uh, sixty three percent of operators have had a reduction of staff due to the pandemic. thirty three percent of operators have had to repurpose staff into other roles. twenty eight percent of operators have had to up their RTU uh, product purchases and thirty thirty seven percent of operators have streamlined and limited their menus as a response to the pandemic. So big changes to to restaurants and kitchens out there. Uh, and that, that's across the board, like really big changes. But the good news here as well, and some customer facts, 78% of consumers are understanding of a limited or reduced menu. 90% of consumers are not bothered by smaller meal portions opposed to pre-pandemic. And 93% of consumers are understanding of having less expensive ingredients in prepared dishes. So I think we're all real about everything that's happened. Uh, we have to be real about how we run our business. And I think customers are understanding of you know what what the industry is going through so today we're going to go through ready to use products speed scratch and we're going to teach you all a little bit we have a great panel uh first i want to introduce i'm really excited we, i have a uh, co-host today it's jeff richards jeff uh give us a wave and uh let us know a little bit about yourself give us a a bit of a bio jeff yeah no problem um i've been in toronto now for over a decade uh cooking for about 17 years. Uh, I've had the fortune opportunity of leading some really great kitchens in the city, Harvard Room, uh, Taroni. Um, I was the multi unit executive chef for Holt Renfrew, school restaurant, motel restaurant. Uh, currently, right now, I'm the corporate executive chef of all union social and social leader restaurants in the GTA. Um, and I do a little bit of TV stuff on the side for CTVs and social. Um, so, yeah, no, I'm really, really excited to be here and I think it'll be a great show today. Great workshop. So that's, that's awesome. Jeff, something I want everyone to know, uh, you know, uh, J Jeff and I, this is the 1st time we're working together. And I think that's a really a cool take on this. Cause we're going to have conversations today about, uh, you know, just food in general. And this is a couple of chefs, just a little banter back and forth. And I think this that's really exciting and opposed to having something real scripted. Um, we're just going to have a conversation about RTU products, speed scratch, and, and uh, you know, have a great conversation with our panel. And I'd also urge you guys um, that are watching, fire some questions in the chat. I, take your uh, take a moment to to think about, you know, how can we help you? And uh, ask some great questions today. So, who 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 are our chefs today? Well, we have uh, a great panel, and I'm going to start with uh, Chef Munilever, uh, Kyle Torrey. Kyle, can you uh, give us a little breakdown about yourself, a little bio? All right, because this is never the awkward part. No, I'm kidding. Thanks, David. It's nice to see you again. So I'm Kyla Tori. As you mentioned, I'm from Unilever Food Solutions. I am the corporate chef for all of Canada, and I've been with uh, Unilever for about 14 years. So I'm loving this idea of speed scratch. As David knows, it's something that I've been talking about for years and years. You know, how can we get you instead of doing step 1 through 20 getting up to step 10 through 20 saving you time so i'm really excited to be here and show you some great ideas thanks kyla 
Uh, next, we have uh, Catherine Duras from Bredor. Catherine, let us know a little bit about yourself. Hello, thanks very much, Dave. It's great to be here. Thanks for inviting us. Uh, so I have been with Bredor now for six years and I am the corporate chef uh, for Ontario and Western Canada. Uh, so, which is really great. Uh, this is my background. I was pastry chef for 14 years. Dave and I actually worked together for a little while there, a couple of years. Um, and, uh, and then I actually went into sales with uh, Cisco for a couple of years also. So I, I truly understand our customer base and I understand it as the customer, as you know, the sales rep and now on the manufacturing side. And like Kyla said, this is such a great opportunity to talk about solutions that we can bring to customers and, you know, at Verdor, you know, we, that's what we bring. We bring solutions to the bakery side of every business. We bring high quality, um, European pastries, croissants, breads, artisan breads, and we bring that ease to the kitchen. So everyone can have, um, a perfect croissant or really delicious, uh, piece of bread at any time. Thanks, Catherine. Looking forward to, uh, to seeing what you have in store for us. Uh, and finally, we have uh, Ollie Mill, and we have uh, Audrey Valuis is with us. And as well, we're going to have a uh, chef, uh, Marco Rose, who's going to pop in. But uh, Audrey, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, no problem. Yeah, so uh, I've been with Ollie Mill now since January 2020. Um, and prior to that, I was with Aramark, and uh, prior to that, with Appetito Canada. So coming to you today with, you know, uh, about nine years of food service experience uh, in sales and, and prior to that, I was on the operation side and worked with Oliver Bonaccini group and um, a few other operators in, in and around Toronto and um, happy to be here today and talk a little bit about Aldi Mel and the products we offer to the market. And uh, I know Chef Mark is on vacation. Um, if you want, I can do his intro or, uh, or, you know, I can mention a little bit about Chef Mark. Uh, or yeah, Mark. let's. Uh... Let's do it. Uh, we will have uh, him pop in uh, virtually a little bit later, but if you can give a breakdown of, you know, tell us about Chef Marco Roche. Yeah, so I'll briefly talk about Chef Mark because he's enjoying his cottage and he's on vacation, so I, I, well deserved. Um, yeah, Chef Mark's been with us since 20, uh, 2009. Uh, prior to that, he's worked in a lot of operation roles, uh, mostly in the Quebec region, but he's also done special projects uh, across North America. Um, he he likes he's a big hockey fan so he's he's done a lot of uh, NHL um, dining sessions and and he's cooked for many athletes um, and he has over forty years of experience in in uh, in food service and we're happy to have him and he does a great job. I appreciate uh, chef support and all email support today. Thank you, um, Jeff. Let's kick it off. Um, let's just you know no secret. Uh, the labor force was, it was a tough go pre pandemic and now we are where we are. Um, you know, what's your, what's your take on, on finding staff right now? And, uh, like, what's your take on the labor force and, and, and how RTU products and speed scratch cooking, how can that fit into a, a new model? Yeah, that's a great question. The, the labor force in the culinary restaurant world right now is thin. Uh, there's not a lot of people. There's a lot of vacancies. So, I mean, you could walk into a restaurant today, knock on the door and ask for a job and you will get one. It's going to happen. Um, so, I mean, in terms of like the best cooks or the most skilled cooks, uh, they're probably retained in their restaurants that they started at pre pandemic. Um, it's very, very important on retainment right now to keep, to keep your staff happy and to keep them, you know, keep offering something that no other restaurant can. Uh, so that's a really big thing in terms of like, you know, RTU products and speed scratch cooking and all that good stuff. It would be super helpful for you if you are lacking in the staff department, because if you don't have the labor to, you know, make demi glaze or to make stocks and to do all these things, that would be a nice way to kind of, uh, push forward on the prep side of things and uh, it, it would definitely help you. But yeah, I think we're going to be in the situation of labor for, for a while. So mm -hmm. I think uh, doing a little bit of research, I mean, the panel today and uh, the workshop today will definitely help in terms of showing you uh, what kind of like RTU products and speed scratch stuff that you can use to, you know, get your restaurant back in order. Yeah. Yeah. I, I totally agree with you. Things have shifted and, uh, 
I think a lot of people have to re rethink how they they operate, and no, no question, I think a lot of cooks have rethought what what they're what they're doing with their time. So, um, I think today, like I said earlier, today is a great time to ask questions. So, if you're in the chat, please ask some great questions. Uh, I can tell you that you know one of our customers at Cisco, who was, I'm telling you, like full scratch cooking, always has been. Uh, and I would have guessed a little while ago, always will be has, you know, even, even they're shifting into RTU where it makes sense. You know, maybe they're not making an aioli from scratch. I mean, maybe they can take a, a Hellman's aioli or a mayonnaise as an example and make, uh, you know, something a roasted garlic uh, aioli with it uh, and cut out certain steps. And that, you know, no different than what you said about the labor pool. It's, it's thin. So you have to, you know, I always say you have to pick and choose your battles and, uh, I think that's what it is right now with using RTU products. And the good news about it too is, I think they've come a long way. If you were to ask me, um, what was a real eye opener when I ordered uh, onboarded with Cisco? I was amazed by all the things that existed. I came from kind of a scratch cooking background for most of my career. And when I saw what's available, and you know, if you told me, well, you can get caramelized onions pre-done, I would have, you know, a little while ago laughed you, laughed you out of town. And, actually trying them uh pretty amazing stuff so you know technology has come a long way with food but let's kick it off uh let, let's you know get into a little bit of food and uh Audris, uh what what are you seeing with all email what are you seeing with uh, rtu products have you seen a shift recently you guys have a lot of pre-cooked items that are amazing uh, has anything, you know, is anything running away with it, like a pre-cooked rib or anything like that? Or have you seen a shift? Well, you might be muted. Oh, oh here we here we go. There you go. Thanks, Bob. Good. Appreciate it. Um, yeah, I mean, I think uh, as Chef uh, Jeff mentioned and, and, you know, Chef Dave, as you mentioned, labor right now, what we're hearing in the marketplace, labor is a huge issue um, and it's a challenge. So, I mean, with Olima, we, we, we offer, you know, a number of ready to use products, um, you know, par fried is big in our portfolio where you get a chicken breast, you know, it's 50% cooked roughly and you finish it off, uh, you know, in your, in your, in your house. So, you know, you, you add that extra touch and you can add, you know, things as you go along and we'll be talking about some of them today. Uh, ribs, you know, uh, it's a tough product to do. And, and really what we're doing in our plan is very similar to what somebody might do uh, at the restaurant. So let us do some of that work. Uh, help you out, alleviate uh, that time and pressure and stress, uh, and, and let us cook it. So you know our, our ribs are sous vide. So um, you know it's a similar process, probably to to what somebody would do at the restaurant. We're just doing it on a larger scale. So um, you know there's a lot of exciting things happening at Ali Mel with with new product launches too, and we'll be talking about a few today. That's awesome, and I I think is just speaks to what I just said, picking your battles, and I. Uh, the, you know, it's no secret that cooking in a, a perfect rib is not, uh, it's, it's not for everybody. So if you can, uh, if you can get something from all email, um, that's, that's perfect. Okay. So we have something in the, in the chat today, uh, that just came in. Uh, I've always done my dishes from scratch. How do I implement RTU speed scratch dishes without my customers knowing the difference? Um, so what, what do you think about that? Jeff, is there a way to incorporate some dishes that you know I, I don't think you go up and, and landslide it and go oh, okay i'm going to just swap my whole program to rtu yeah. but, uh, what's your take on adding a few dishes here and there yeah like that's a great question in terms of you know i would definitely use rtu products as like a tool right it's not a way out so uh you know you, you can't just be like oh i'm gonna use this one thing now and this is our this is our recipe and then just plop on the menu like it's just it's not going to work necessarily there are more tools you use them in a way that um you're looking to save on labor you're looking to save on waste you're looking to save on like whatever it may be um so i would definitely just bump up the ingredients that you place into that like you mentioned with the, the hollandaise like adding tarragon and a little bit more vinegar or something make it a baronaise and um but no it, it's it's going to be tricky in the beginning because you got to get super creative. But I think that's the best part, right? Is that you got to look at these products and go, okay. So I have the base model. If I am making a roasted garlic aioli and I have mayonnaise instead of like using your egg yolks and your oil and that kind of stuff, it's just getting a little bit more creative with it, I think. And listen, like you're not trying to fool anybody. Like, you know, like no one's going to go, is that an RTU product? Like, they're not going to do that. So right. I think it's super important just to use it as a tool. 
get creative with it and just see what you can do and just see what you can pull it out of it. Yeah. I, I, I like what you said there. I think, you, I think a lot of chefs, you know, we have a lot of pride and we want to showcase, you know, what we do best. And I feel as though there's some, uh, you, you feel as though you're duping somebody by not doing it yourself. Yes. And uh, I think we need to get away from that mindset. And, and you, like you said, exact words, like use it as a tool. Um, so I'd like to use that and we'll lead into Chef Mark's uh, video. And I want to introduce, I, I didn't do it at the beginning. You see Val Saki at the top of your screen, likely if you're, if you're tuning in, Val's going to be uh, taking care of a lot of the things from behind the scenes. And one of those is rolling uh, Chef Mark of all emails video. Like, uh, Audrey has said he's at his cottage, which sounds like a great place to be, but he was good enough to create some great concepts. And, you know, we've talked a little bit about RT and Speed Scratch. Let's take a look at what Chef Mark, let's hit his take on it. If you can roll the clip, Val, that would be amazing. Hi everyone, Marc Laroche, Corporate Chef at Alimel. Uh, today we'll be presenting three products to you. First will be a fully cooked rib, pork rib, of course. Second one will be a chicken fajita strips. And third one will be a, a breaded chicken breast halal. So uh, let's get started uh, with the first recipe. What, I, what I'm gonna be doing with the first recipe are, of course, I've got my ribs that are already cooked. So what I've done with the ribs, I've used some, some of um, Unilever Knorr, uh, some uh, deep intense smoke. Uh, also, I've got a bit of a roasted uh, air. We got some roasted uh, onions and, and garlic. And also I got some uh, wild mushrooms. So what I've done with that, I've mixed them, brushed my, my rib, first cooked the rib, then I did the same thing with the sauce, uh, combined them with a the barbecue sauce to finish it to finish it up. So as you can see here, it's nice and caramelized. So what I'm, what I'm gonna, it could be served of course as is, but what I'm gonna do with it, I'm gonna make a taco. So I'm gonna put that aside here. I pull apart the rib meat, as you can see here. And I got my grill taco. What I like to do with the grill taco to keep them warm is to grill them, then to cover them with a uh, with a tin foil and so they're nice and grilled, but they stay warm when you need them. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna set two on my table here. I got my garnishes in the back here. So second here. So I've got, I'm going to start with my whole rib. So a little rib goes a long way. You know, you don't need to use that much in your recipe. So just a little bit here. Nice and nice barbecue. Put that back in there. Right. And I'm going to go with the garnishes. I got some pickled onions. What I've done here, I got some red onions that I pickled in vinegar and, uh, and black pepper. So nice and vinegary and crunchy as well. Thinking about crunch. Some red cabbage as well in there. So get my red cabbage. I love the color of red cabbage. And you know, it gives you that crunchiness when you bite into it as well. What's a taco without a guac, okay? Bit of guacamole in on there. Some salsa as well. Need a bit of sauce in there, even if there's sauce on the rib. And of course, some fresh cilantro. Put that here. And just to hold it together before you serve it to your customer. Nice, here, skewer. There you go. We got some rib, pull rib taco with a deep barbecue sauce. There you go. This is our first recipe. So now let's move on to the second one. Just get rid of this, bear with me. Second recipe, what, I'm, what I've done is that I've used some of um, our friend at Bridor, I've used some of uh, the bistro pastry. You know, they have many choices. I've used three of them. So what, I, what I've done, I, I took the first one, which is the spinach and feta one. I got the tomato and olive one as well. And I got the Indian 
one as well. So what I've done with these, I used early mail, fully cooked fajita strips. Those are great. They're, um, they're made with the thigh, so you know, they're a little bit, they got the juiciness in there. You know, we, we all know how juicy um, uh, Thai meat is. And it's got just a little bit of flavor into it, but not too strong. So that's why I can put it with different flavors. So what I've done here, quite simple. I partly thaw the pastry from the door and I open it. And as you can see, butterfly, of course. Brush some egg wash, put some chicken in there. So added some protein. Close it again, put it down nice and tight. Then I baked it. So I did it with all the flavors. And with the magic of television, I'll get some already done. Salad here. So that was salad. And there you go. So I got my Greek one with the feta cheese and the uh, and the spinach. I got the butter chicken one of course with the uh, with the Indian one and the Mediterranean one with the tomato so what I'm gonna do be doing is you can serve one or two if you want just put a bit of fresher beer on my plate and there you go so you got you know see how quick it that is can you know can you afford to uh, in your kitchen to start rolling puff pastry and you know and to stuff it and cook chicken and then stuff it in there so it's already done you use the uh, the Bredor pastry, bistro pastry, and the Oli Mel uh, fully cooked chicken thigh. So you got a chicken, a Greek chicken uh, uh, puff pastry. So that that was the second one. Now for the third one. The third one I'm going to be using the Elal fully cooked chicken breast. Those are great. They're really nice and crispy. Once again, can you afford to have a cook? you know, bread, the chicken in, in, in a house, uh, cross con contamination in your kitchen and everything. So we've done the work for you and they're nice, really nice and crispy as well. So what I've done with these, I got some toasted buns here. What I like, you know, we all know about the chicken war sign, which is going on right now. You know, what I like to make for the, uh, it's to use a, a brioche bun. So what I've done, I've used the, once again, our friend at Bidor. So I've used their brioche bun. They have many other buns, but I, I like this one. What I like about it is once you butter it and you grill it, see how nice and, you know, how nice and crunchy it gets. So what I'm gonna be doing with this, first recipe. I got my garnishes here. It's all about mise en place, eh? So what I've got, I've used the uh, almonds spicy mayo it's already done you know all you have to do is open it and put it in your sandwich as well so you know you want to give it a bit of a kick to your sandwich so i got the almond mayo top and bottom of course i've got the fully cooked chicken breast one good thing with chicken breast when you use braided chicken breast if you want to make sure that you got a really high quality chicken breast Cook one and open it. You'll see, you'll see the fiber. You know, you'll see that this is a real chicken breast. You can see, you know, with the fiber here, the breading falling here. So, you know, you'll, you'll know, you'll know if it's a high quality one because you pull it and it's, you know, you got a chicken breast in there as well. So, quite easy, one of these on. Maybe just a little bit more mayo so it sticks on. Some tomato. Come on, tomato. There we go. What's a sandwich without pickles? You know, pickles is everywhere now. I like extra pickle. Go for one more? Yeah, let's go for one more. A big one too. And let's finish that up with some lettuce. There you go. And my tray. go we got the chicken sandwich so you guys can be part of that chicken sandwich war 
While we're at it, I got. Oops. Maybe. I drag it. Put a skewer on there. You know, when the waiter, the server takes it out in the dining room, it's not gonna fall all over. And it looks great. And you could also stick a knife in there as well, a steak knife. And I got, maybe I got an extra recipe for you guys, a bonus recipe, you know. This, we all know our chicken parm is popular, you know. And this is a chicken parm in a way. So what you, what you do, you know, you get, One, that's cook. Turn it on the other side, you know, makes a little bit of a cup here. Put some tomato sauce. Optional, but I like to put a little bit of fresh basil. And I got some mozzarella and parm cheese here. Combination of both. Stick that in the oven. And this is the magic of television. I got one already done. So, and I got also some spaghetti done here. There you go. You got a chicken parm. You know, that quick as quick as ten minutes. Not even that. It's done. It's ready. It like tastes great. Great, a great seller on your menu. So I hope those recipes were useful for you. It was a pleasure presenting to you. And once again, I'm Mark Laroche from Alimel. Come and see us. We're all back. Some great concepts there from Chef Mark. Uh, really good stuff. And w one of the things that's great looking at that video is uh, honestly, you know, I think Cisco must have 90% of those items in RTU form. And that's something you should really, uh, really consider. Think about your staff member making that that guacamole or that salsa every single time. It, you know, we all create kitchen Bibles and specs and we, we adhere to those things, you know, but there's always someone that wants a little more lime juice here and a little more cracked pepper over there. And before you know it, you don't have that consistency you're looking for. And your customer comes to your restaurant and says, oh, I, it's the best guacamole. And that's why we come here. But today it's not. So, you know, to everyone watching, do you know, like, we, ha we have all these RTU products. So reach out. Uh, you, I mean, you can reach out to myself after the fact or reach out to your sales consultant and ask for these solutions. What do you what do you think, Jeff? You know, looking at some of those items there and some of the items in the the Olimo portfolio. I know you and I both really enjoy. You know, we're into barbecue. It's something like every weekend. I, I, I my smoker we're rolling smoke, and uh, I don't know if my neighbors love me or hate me for it. Uh, but what what's your take on you know doing some barbecue items? It's so popular, and you know. Things like ribs and, and chicken and all these things. What do you? What's your take on RTU? Like, how can you implement those things? And what do you think about that? Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, I'm a big barbecue guy. Um, but it's you know, it's 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 super helpful. Like, if if you're doing like a, especially coming into the summer, um, I mean, in terms of a menu, you'd probably want to keep everything as fresh and as light. Um, and delicious as possible for the summer, right? Um, not too heavy. Everything should just be like very seasonal and fun and delicious. And I think like, you know, some of the chicken and the ribs and the, a couple of these products over here at uh, Alima look really, really great. And um, I think it could just be super, super helpful. And um, even like a limited time kind of like offering there would be really, really, really great. Just to kind of get your feet in the water and just see if that's something that your guests would enjoy. And, um, you know, you, you can't get, you, you got to try, you know, you got to try something. And, and I think right now with our labor force and the way that the industry is kind of going, I'm like looking at these products and I think doing like a rib or a chicken dish, um, even if you don't necessarily specialize in barbecue, it, could, it like I said, it could be really great to just get your feet in the water there, give it a shot, uh, see if your guests respond to it. And I think they could be really great additions to like a, a summer menu or like a limited offering menu or whatever they do, a special. Yeah, they'd be great. 
I love that you said that. I always tell our customers to try LTO items because that's you're, you're doing your homework. It's not it's not right there on you. You don't have a hundred copies printed of, of that menu, and you you have to adhere to it forever. It, it's just doing your homework. So I think that's a great tip, Jeff. We do have a question in the chat here. It's going out to all email and to the the chefs today. Uh, we own a breakfast restaurant. What can you suggest we start with? Is there a pre cooked bacon? That our customers wouldn't realize that it's pre-cooked. Uh, I'm going to send that one over to to Audrey's if that works for you. Audrey's is there pre-cooked bacon? And you know what? Like bacon and eggs at a at a breakfast place, it's kind of a staple. What's your take on on pre-cook? Yeah, I mean we we have a great uh, portfolio of pre-cooked and different slice counts uh, that that can work for the operator. You know, we have ones that are even 50% cooked. We have ones that are, you know, uh, fully cooked, uh, ready to go. If you're doing, you know, uh, for a breakfast joint, maybe breakfast and lunch. You know, you can use it for your bre breakfast run, uh, rush, but then you can also, you know, use it for your sandwiches for lunch as well. Uh, very easy to use. They hold well. Uh, you know, whether you're holding them in a steam table or or, or whatnot, um, you know, they're, 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 they're very easy. Um, you know, you get rid of that, you know, you're not, you're not dealing with waste. You're not dealing with, you know, burnt pieces uh, where you might overcook it. If somebody puts it on the flat top and walks away and comes back, you know, 15 minutes later, it's, it's going to be crisp, right? If you're, you're getting a fully cooked product that you can trust, um, you know, it's uh, portion control is easy too. Most of them, you know, we have layered out options where you can grab three slices from the freezer if you need, throw them right on, and and the way you go, um, you know, so a very easy product to use, great to use. Uh, all of our bacon as well, just to add. Uh, and Chef uh, Jeff mentioned local. Uh, you know, all of our bacon is grown, manufactured, and produced here in in Canada. Most of our hogs are coming from Ontario and Quebec, so um, you know, very uh, very local. And actually, uh, our, our manufacturing plant for bacon is in Cornwall, Ontario. So you could even say it's uh, it's local to Ontario as well. I love that you can you can call it out as local on your menu if you choose to. I like the different uh, doneness levels of the bacon. That means that that's that speaks to speed scratch right there. You can you know either fire a fully cooked right on that uh, that clubhouse, or you could sit there and you know brush the the fifty percent cook with some sriracha or maple or whatever it is, and, and do a uh, your own again speed scratch take on that bacon, and it's uh, it's saving a heck of a lot of time. And that's a that's a great answer. Thanks, Audris. We're going to send it over to Berdor and, and Catherine Duras. Catherine, what do you have for us today? Hi. Um, so we've got a, a couple of great ideas uh, for all of our viewers today. Uh, so first and foremost, we have our um, iconic Berdor Perfect Plus on, and I'm just going to show. I'm going to talk to you how this can be a real uh, labor saver and a real pull for customers to come in, making fresh croissants that are consistent every day. Uh, and then we're going to talk about our softer artisan uh, breads and how it's a great addition to lunch menus. And then lastly, we'll just touch on the bistros. Uh, Chef Mark did a great job uh, talking to our bistros. So thank you very much, uh, all in all. We do appreciate that. Uh, so just a few other tips on how to take a product and you know uh, pull some of that versatility out of it. Uh, so. First, uh, as I said, we have our perfect croissant. So everyone's super familiar with a croissant. Uh, the difference between ours is and the rest is that number one, this is an all butter croissant. So you're getting the real deal here. We are very dedicated to our clean label program, meaning that you know we're using uh, clean ingredients, and you, what you're getting is an authentic. Uh, European crafted croissant. Uh, and so why this is a great item for kitchens to have, cafes to have, especially right now, is that uh, our pastries uh, come to uh, your kitchen uh, pre-proofed and pre-egg washed. And that is huge. It's not enough just to say, here's a box of croissants, off you go. You know, proofing is honestly almost as difficult as the makeup of the croissant. You can perfectly make that laminated dough and you could have someone who spends hours doing it and that's your labor right there. Uh, and then it goes into the proof box and someone underproofs it, overproofs it. Today it looks great, tomorrow it looks okay. The next day it's super questionable. And on top of that, the time that it takes to get from point A to point B 
it is, it takes time because, you know, if your, you know, unproof croissant is frozen, you have to thaw it, then you have to proof it, you have to egg wash it, and then you have to bake it. And you're really looking at a couple of hours there. Whereas with Verdor's uh, lineup, our perfect croissant, you can just go ahead and take that out of the freezer, put it on your tray, let it slack out for about 15 minutes. And so by that, I mean buying, not proofing. So just give it 15 minutes and then into the oven, it usually bakes within that uh, 18 to 20 minute range. And you've got fresh, authentic, buttery croissants. And what's really valuable about that is it's very easy for the end user to consistently and constantly have fresh croissants. Helps them reduce their waste and helps them to always have something to offer to their customers. So there's no missed revenue throughout the day. And that's what everyone needs right now. So in saying that, I know for a lot of restaurants, it's like, okay, okay, it's a croissant. It's kind of boring. You know, what do I do with the croissant? I put turkey in there, or I put tuna in there, or whatever. So one of the things that we like to talk to is the croissant's versatility. We love showing customers our little crepit here. Uh, so this is our perfect croissant, but we just took it. And what we did was we thawed it out completely. <clears throat> so you'll see this is the perfect croissant thawed out. And all you need is a jumbo muffin tin. And just take that croissant and then just pinch the, or just fold, not even pinch the ends together. Pop it in there and then just go ahead and bake. And what you've done is you've taken a very uh, simple idea and you've elevated it. You've turned it into something else. People are very taken by the shape. So, and this makes for a great breakfast sandwich carrier. Uh, so if you're looking to do something a little bit different, a little bit elevated for your brunch menu, this is a great way to go. You can go ahead and top your croissant before baking it. I've got some uh, black sesame seeds and some white sesame seeds on here. You can put everything bagel mix on there. You can make it sweet, put some sugar on top, and then just put a little hole in the bottle, bottom and fill that, and you've got this great filled croissant that is grab and go. Uh, so breakfast sandwiches. I'm going to go ahead and build one. I've been dying to do this all week because I love what we're about to do here. So I've got our uh, croissant, our cropping, cut in half and in the oven, I've just got a few yummy our products here. Uh, first, we've got our Halimel, uh chicken here, the breaded halal chicken. So this, when I was talking to Chef Mark, he was like, hey, everyone loves a, a fried chicken breakfast sandwich. And I was like, yes, they do. Thank you. And this is Perfect. It is like the absolute perfect fit for this little croissant here. You know, there's, uh, you know, if there's a little overhang. Everyone likes that. And I want to let you know that this uh, bread and chicken breast, I baked it. I don't have deep fryer here. I baked it, and it is awesome, 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 awesome. It like it took everything in me not to eat it this morning. So we've got our breakfast or our chicken on here, and then I'm going to go ahead and double down and put some bacon on there and some aged cheddar cheese. So we'll start with the cheddar cheese on here. We'll put two slices on because why not? And then we're going to put some bacon. And then we will finish this off with an egg. And so you've got some fantastic RTU items here. You've got an authentic butter croissant. You've got a crispy chicken. Um, and then you've got bacon and an egg on top. And you can't tell me someone isn't going to love seeing that come to their table for Sunday brunch. But on top of that, Rodor has up the ante this past year. And we have come up with a lineup of RTU or RTB uh, vegan croissants. So same idea. All you need to do here is thaw the vegan croissant out and then bake it. You have a perfect vegan croissant. So, you know, at the same table, you've got a vegan, no problem. So we're going to go ahead, cut this in half. I did the exact same thing. I just let it thaw, put the ends together, baked it in jumbo muffin tin, came out perfect. And we've got ourselves a uh, 
vegan egg patty, but just egg patty. And I've got some vegan uh, cheddar cheese to go on top. And because Sunday brunch, let's put a little on the bottom. And you've got a fantastic vegan breakfast sandwich. So two really great options to elevate your menu to really speed up and save on some of that linger and really put out a high quality breakfast. Going to that first question that popped up, you know, for anyone out there who is looking to lean into RTU, I think the key is find yourself high quality products and, you know, it's, it's an easy switch. So let's see. Moving from breakfast, I'm just going to tuck this away over here. We're going to move on to lunch. And so what we have is our soft artisan bread. Uh, so this is our white soft artisan bread here. Uh, what I love about this is that um, it's got a really nice soft bite, but it's not texturally bland. And so by that, what I mean is when you bite in, it's not one dimensional, it's not mushy. You've got that a little bit of bite. You've got that nice interior that's soft, but still has texture to it. This is hinge cut and this is fully baked. Okay. So when we talk about RTU, I know bread seems like a no brainer, but again, lean into those high quality products, something that you can really stand by uh, for your customers. So uh, what's really nice about these is if you were in a situation where you need to, you picked up a function and you need to make uh, sandwiches in the morning for the evening or, you know, late in the evening for, you know, delivery first thing in the morning. These are excellent. They hold up really, really well as a filled sandwich in the fridge. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut this one in half just so everyone can take a peek on the inside. You can see this has, I don't know if everyone can see this, but it's got a really nice low profile. So we're not sitting on mounds and mounds of bread. Uh, so it's a really nice balance between whatever your filling might be and the bread. And then you can see, I don't, I'm hoping everyone can see this. Uh, we've got a really nice cell structure. It is, uh, it's nice and open, but not so open that your uh, spreads and your fillings get lost in there. And it's got a really nice soft touch to it. Uh, so it's got this really nice structure to it. So, and then on top of that, we've got these beautiful scores on top. So this really does present itself as a beautiful artisan style bread. So the sandwich that I'd like to make for everyone today here, uh, combination of a couple of great ingredients from um, the other vendors uh, participating today. So first I'm using the uh, Hellman's mayonnaise and I just mixed in a little bit of sriracha. So, you know, if you're thinking, okay, well, I'd like spicy mayo, uh, but, you know, I also use mayo. I, I, you know, I think everyone knows, you know, just add a little sriracha into your regular mayo and off you go. So I've got a generous amount because I really like mayo. <laughs> so I like a lot on my sandwich. And then in the oven, I have some of those great ribs that Chef Mark was, uh, had introduced earlier. And so all I did was I pulled them off the bone and then I uh, mixed them with some barbecue sauce and some of the Noor uh, heat, intense heat. Like seriously, like this is, this product, fantastic. All you need is a little bit and it, true to its name, it is an intense flavor. So awesome product. So all I'm gonna do is just, I've gone ahead and uh, just mixed it with barbecue sauce, some of the Noor intense heat. So it's got a bit of a kick to it. And then I'm just going to go ahead and top my sandwich here. And this is nice and warm. And I know chef Mark said a little bit goes a long way, but I like my mayonnaise, I like a lot. So we're going to put a lot on here. And what's and the reason why I want to put a lot on here is because this bread is built for this type of uh, filling, something that is maybe warm, that maybe has some, um, you know, it's it's got a lot of liquid to it or it's really saucy. So this is what this bread is made for. Uh, and then lastly, I'm gonna go ahead and top this with a little bit of fennel and apple slaw. So talking about RTU, 
we've got a great break here. Uh, we've got a great spread. We've got some phenomenal ribs that took no time at all. So this is where you can focus your labor. Put a finishing touch on here that is really unique, really um, taking it up to the next level. You know, we can put coleslaw on here, but why don't we put fennel slaw on here? So it's a really nice, crunchy, fresh uh, slaw. I've got celery in here. I've got apples. I've got tarragon. So everything really complements uh, the flavors of the pork and really, you know, that acidity balances out uh, all that richness from the pork. I'm making a bit of a mess here. No apologies. <laughs> and so, Catherine, as you're, yeah. Sorry, Catherine, as you're doing that, yeah, a question came in, and I, I think it's especially relevant. It's, it's especially relevant to to pastries. Um, you know, is there not a hint of the level of quality of a pre-finished product, like? It says, uh, I've tried some pretty poor quality pre-done products in the past. And I think this is especially a good question for you to field because, I mean, there's no, you know, I know Berdar's products are high quality, but, you know, pastries and baking, it is what it is. The products that you have at Berdar, would, would, would a customer know that they're, uh, you know, pre-proofed or ready to use products? Well, and, and that's, you know, that's really it, you know, um, going out to all the customers out there, lean into your Cisco uh, team and ask them those questions. Because, you know, when you're just throwing out this name and that name and, you know, RTV, raw, et cetera, et cetera, it's very hard to decipher uh, for a lot of customers. And that's where you need to lean into your ex experts, your Cisco team. They're going to let you know. They'll ask you those questions. What are you using it for? You know, what's your level of expertise? What's your equipment? You know, that's how you will be able to tell, you know, if you're getting a higher quality product and then ask, you know, what are the ingredients? Tell me what's in there. Um, you know, and then on top of that, you know, if you're still unsure, ask to speak directly to a manufacturer rep. We're always, always happy to talk. I know that's a lot of legwork when we're talking about, you know, like uh, on the spot decision, uh, but that's what your Cisco team is here for. They'll be the ones who will easily be able to advise you for sure. Perfect, thanks Catherine. Yeah. No problem. So this is the finishing touch on our sandwich here. So we've got this awesome um, uh, cold rib sandwich, um, you know, so, if you're ever, you know, thinking, okay, well, I need to do that LTO, this is a great way to go here. Uh, and then lastly, we just want to touch on our bistros. Uh, so our bistro lineup that Chef Mark had um, talked a little bit about earlier. Uh, it is, again, another RTU or RTV product. Uh, and what is different about this from our croissants is this is our savory lineup. Anyone watching, when you hear us talk about bistros, we're talking about our savory lineup. So we've got some really great flavors happening right now. Uh, I'll just bring this a little bit closer. We've got our Parmesan and leek. Uh, we have a curry. We have our spinach and feta, which is always a, a crowd pleaser, and tomato and olive. So you can see this is a nice full size piece. Sometimes people struggle a little bit with the idea of this full size piece. And we always encourage uh, our customers, you know, think outside of the box. And this really doesn't take much. Uh, you know, if this is a bit too big for you, go ahead and cut the bistro in half before baking. And what you get is this really lovely uh, half size here. So this is a really nice portion. Anyone who's got a cafe going, anyone who is gearing back up to do catering and they're doing afternoon snack platters, this is a great way to go. Uh, also, uh, this is fantastic for a um, side to soup or a salad. So really nice, easy go to. You can even take this step further, uh, cut the bistro into thirds before baking. And then one of the things I like to do, uh, one of our teammates in uh, in the West came up with this idea, I think day two, that he started working with us, which is fantastic. He cut our bistro into four, and then just like the croissant, just folded the ends over, baked them in a little muffin tin. You've got these lovely little popovers. So when we get there, back to catering events where we have past appetizers one day, <laughs> Um, or even if you're doing a catering drop off and go, you've got this lovely bite-sized 
uh, bistro popover. So these are all made with uh, croissant dough, 100% butter. Uh, all of the fillings are made with um, creamy. They're, they've got a really nice creamy center to them. Uh, we've got fresh vegetables in there. Uh, so a lot of things to add here. Uh, and one of the other things that I wanted to talk about was, okay, what else do we do with this? Besides catering, besides cafe, you can easily make this into a sandwich. Uh, so what I love and what I talk to you about this is, hey, you know, this is ideal for a sandwich. We've already got a filling on top, so that adds a lot of flavor. Um, you know, in most of our uh, bistros, we've got some cheese added in there. Uh, so you're kind of ready to go in terms of sandwich building. And because it's got this really generous croissant on the bottom, it's easy to cut in half. So this is our tomato olive. And what I would like to do is just take this a step further and build a caprese sandwich because we're already there. We've got all those lovely Mediterranean flavors. We've got uh, the uh, tomatoes, we've got the olives. So why not add a little bit of fresh tomato, a little fresh uh, mozzarella and some fresh basil and off you go. This is a really nice uh, offering to have uh, for customers, something a little different, something unique. Uh, they're not going to see this just anywhere. And there we go. We've got this beautiful little sandwich. I'm just going to go ahead and plate this. So you can see how lovely this is as a nice summer option. So as Jeff was saying, you know, as we are in the summer and we're looking maybe for a lighter fare, uh, this is a great way to go. You can go ahead and serve this with a really beautiful salad with a light vinaigrette. And there you go. You've got something interesting, something delicious something really satisfying and something that the kitchen team can really take pride in because they make this perfectly themselves. And that's it for, for <laughs> oh. I like the water quality is uh, just so high. Like it, it would be per perfect on anyone's menu. Uh, we're going to speed it along, guys, for the sake of time. And to all our viewers, I think we're going to go over time here. We're recording this and I think we're going to run a little past uh, our, our end time, I hope you can find a few more minutes to stick around with us. Uh, we have Kyla of Unilever. Uh, if you want to take the stage, Kyla, it's, it's all yours. And I hope everyone can stick around a few minutes uh, longer with us. Sure. Thank you, David. Okay, first off, I, I don't know if Chef Mark can hear us at his cottage, but amazing job. And Catherine, phenomenal job. The only thing I wanted to say is I heard at one point someone might think croissants are boring. I'm just going to put it out there. I'm a celiac. I can't have any delicious, delicious bakery products. Never boring. It's the one thing I miss that you just can't recreate. Um, amazing job. I love what you did. And so I really wanted to quickly say, we do also carry a pre-made spicy mayo with red jalapeno and cayenne pepper in it. Anyway, just thought I'd take that sales moment. Um, so I am really excited to be here today. Um, and I kind of just want to make a couple of points. I know Catherine already touched on one of them, um, but when it comes to convenience products, because as you'll see, I'm really, I'm the Norrin Hellman's lady, uh, and we really, we're not center of the plate. You know, we have great partners to pair with, uh, Cisco, Olimel, Bredore, uh, they're more center of the plate. We're the sauces. We're what helps kind of build things up or add extra flavor at the end of it. Um, but I have many a time talked to operators who, of course, would love to make everything from scratch. I mean, we love food. We love to cook. Of course, we want to make things from scratch. But we recognize that that's not always an option. Um, but the things to really watch out for that I would say when looking for a convenience product or ready to use product, and this is where I see a lot of overlap between Olimel, Verdor, and Unilever, is it's really about picking quality products that you know what quality ingredients they're made from. So we're all about no artificial colors, flavors, preservatives. We're really about basing the original recipe on scratch. You can really see that when it comes to products like Hellman's mayonnaise, of course. Um, but it's also handling these products with the same care that you would treat a raw or fresh ingredient. I think often somebody will get, like, let's say a dry hollandaise sauce, and they just kind of eh, throw it all together, that'll be fine. 
take the time to really understand how it's made, prepare it correctly, and then add your little nuances to it. Whether you are just enhancing it more with extra lemon juice and a little bit of vinegar, or if you want to turn it into a Bernays. So these are the things that it can save you a lot of time, but still being conscientious of what you're doing will make you still feel really proud of what you're making, despite the fact that it's a ready to use product. So the first category I kind of want to talk about, because it's really big for Noor, is our bases. So we think about stocks, right? So bases, all they are, are concentrated product where once diluted with water can mimic a stock, right? Stocks, as we know, can take a ton of time to make. So we start thinking about beef stocks being six to eight hours, chicken stocks three to four, veggie stocks a little bit less, there could still be a lot of inconsistencies. It can still be really expensive, especially if you're looking for that consistency and not just using scraps around the kitchen, right? We know that they are the uh, base for everything. Um, so really to get that consistency, to save that time, I'm gonna show you a recipe that actually shows versatility. And I'm gonna use the liquid concentrated bases that we have. These are ingredient first bases. So if you look at your tiers and you think, okay, granulated powder base, usually salt first, a lot more value. Uh, then you have your mid-tier, which I see as paste bases, and then our liquid concentrated bases, which easily dilute in water, no problem. But, but there's more. The beauty of this is that I'm gonna use this in a different way today. So we're talking about one product. Sure, it could be a stock, but it could also be a glaze. It could be a marinade. That's the beauty of this. So the one that we actually just launched, so we have our chicken, beef, and a veg, is our seafood base. And this is lobster and shrimp. Yum, so good. The other thing you have to remember too is that it is concentrated, so it's salty as is. So you're not gonna see me add any more salt to the protein that I'm cooking. So I've already got a pan heated up here. And I have some shrimp that I've tossed in a Cajun spice seasoning, no salt. Um, and I'm going to toss them in here. And what I'm gonna to make today is kind of a different take on a po' boy, right? We're thinking about something that can either be traveling really well um, or a nice summer menu item as well. So I'm gonna do a little bit of a twist on it too. Doesn't quite have that sizzle yet. Um, but what I'm gonna to do too, as this starts to heat up, I am going to actually add, well, this wasn't the one I had opened, of course, when we're short on time, you get to watch me open packages. Um, so I am going to just add this directly into the pan and it's going to add really nice color because it does have a tomato base to it as well, but very, very light, which also means that once it's diluted, it has that kind of nice, I'd say orangey hue to the stock. So if you are making a bisque or you're making a chowder, you know that you're going to have the same sort of idea as if you had cooked off those lobster shells, you're going to really get that flavor and that smell coming up, which is great. So I'm gonna put this right in here. The only thing I wanna be careful about using it directly like this, again, is gonna be the salt levels. So while that's cooking off, I'm going to make sure that I set myself up with my lovely Bridgeur Demi Baguette, which as you can see already, based on my previous comment, I will be giving the sandwich now to somebody else in the household because unfortunately I can't eat it. Um, but I've already cut this in half uh, made it a little bit of a larger sandwich. And like traditional po' boy, I do have a Remy log here. So of course I've used Hellman's half the fat mayonnaise because you know, I'm gonna save the calories in one spot and then add them through something else. So this is where I have my horseradish. I have some of my Cajun seasoning, some of my Creole mustard, um, a little bit of lemon juice in there as well. Of course the mayonnaise, some pickle juice. I think Chef Mark was talking about everyone loves pickles. We're gonna get some pickle juice in there too. So I'm going to spread this on the top and the bottom because very similarly to Chef Catherine, I also love mayonnaise. Isn't that great? <laughs> I work for the right company, I think. So we're gonna do that. And this is how we're gonna kind of mix it up a little bit more. So I'm gonna add a slaw instead of having lettuce on there. And I'm gonna make a pineapple slaw. So again, nice and summery. It's gonna be great with those shrimp that really are gonna have those deep, intense flavors to it. A little bit of spice to it as well. Oh, they're already 
getting a little bit of pink, but they have that nice orangey kind of color to them too, which is lovely. I'm just gonna grab a bowl here and I'm gonna mix some of my slaw. So it's just already shredded cabbage. Again, about knowing where we can cut corners and that it's not gonna make a difference. I personally, I'm not shredding my cabbage. Forget that. I have time to focus on other things. I'm gonna probably do almost equal amounts of the pineapple because I really want that to come through. And then the other thing that I'm going to add here, we've already talked about this, or Catherine already talked about it, was the intense heat. So this is, and you'll see it again in a recipe, I'm doing it a bit, and I will explain exactly what these are. But they're liquid seasoning, and it has poblano and habanero, habanero pepper in it, so just a tiny bit, to just kind of balance out that pineapple sweetness with the cabbage. It also gives the coleslaw a little bit more moisture. So I'm going to put that aside for a second. I've got tomatoes. So going back to the OG po boy, we're adding our tomatoes. I'm toyed with the idea of actually adding pickle. Um, because apparently everyone loves it. Uh, I felt like that might be a little weird with the pineapple. I mean, you could go there, but I'm, I'm just gonna drop that for now. So we've got that going on, and I'm gonna grab my shrimp because I can smell that they're done. Oh, beautiful color. You'll see them as I put it out here. I wish we had smell o vision Sorry, I said it. That's like a way bad playback. Get on there, you little shrimp. Okay. We got that. And I'm going to put my slaw on. It's going to be a little bit of a mess here. It's okay. I'm not serving this to anyone else. All right, oh, upside down. That was smart. Anyway, here we go. This is our tank on the po boy, which is falling apart. If I don't have any toothpicks. See, Catherine, you were worried about being messy. I'm always going to top you. <laughs> anyway, we have a beautiful, it was a beautiful sandwich until I moved it. So you're welcome. If anyone ever feels awkward, just invite me somewhere because I'll make it happen. <laughs> It was good. It was it was good, Kyla. Yeah, it was lovely. Okay, so that being said, though, I'm just going to move on to my next my next dish, if that's okay. So I am going to take this now into bowls. Everybody loves a bowl. Bowls are still really popular. What is a bowl? Legit anything that just goes in a bowl. It doesn't have to be grain based. What I see it as a bunch of different fresh ingredients that make it a lot more hearty um that make it a lot more filling it's just taking salads to a whole new level so i'm going to make this a little bit different i'm going to take our caesar salad dressing and i'm going to mix it uh, with some other ingredients to make it quite special so i'm going to do smoked chicken or a smoked caesar chicken salad so you see how i kind of switched my words around there i'm going to use the deep smoke from nor intense flavor so again we have this lineup of different flavors. We have a roast umami, a miso umami, a deep herb, which is the mushroom one that Chef Mark was talking about, a citrus fresh, and of course our chili heat, but our deep smoke. It is not like liquid smoke. I want to put that out there right now. Immediately when I think of liquid smoke, I think of something really acrid. You do one drop too many and you ruined everything. And you know what I also want to say too? I'm a barbecue guy. You guys are talking about barbecue. I love barbecuing. But what I don't have on my condo balcony is a smoker, because I'm pretty sure I would get kicked out. So what I can use is adding intense smoke. And the thing about this is that it does have those hickory notes to it. It does have those maple notes to it. Really, really complex flavors, as well as smoked sugar. So it's not even particularly sweet, but just enough to kind of cut that edge off. And you can really add it to anything at the beginning of a process of cooking. So whether you're marinating or braising something, whether you want to add it to a barbecue sauce like Chef Mark did, or taking something that you usually could not smoke and adding that smoke flavor to it. And here, this is where I'm going to add it to the Caesar salad dressing. So again, just going to be a little bit conscientious about the salt on here, but a little bit does go a long way, as Catherine had said, which is why these bottles are so tiny. 
The other thing too that's really nice to notice is because they are concentrated, they don't need to be refrigerated either. So this is something that you want to just have already open on the line, whether you're going to add it in last minute. It just makes it really easy and of course always saves you room in the fridge. So I've got kale and romaine lettuce in here. I'm going to add my Caesar dressing. There we go. And grab it all. So we're going to continue to add some more ingredients to this because of course, like I said, the bowl is all about texture, color, contrast, and you've already made it that much more special by having a really high quality ready to use dressing, but mostly that you're adding something really extra to it that differentiates from other Caesar salads that might be served at other restaurants. All right, so, here we go, fill in this bowl. This is what I love. I know kale still for me has a special place in my heart. Um, I know back in the day it was just garnish, it was just decoration, but you know, really having that texture to it, but it holds up so well. And so many things where you can actually make it ahead of time, right? Making it easier on the line if you've already got pre-marinated greens as well. So I'm going to take the fabulous Ali Mel breaded chicken breast. Um, this one I've diced up because I just want to be able to eat this with my fork. I'm not going to want to have to do a whole bunch of cutting. Then I've got some cherry tomatoes because we need some bright color to it. So I'm going to add those on there. I'm going to add my chicken, which is still quite warm. Give it some crunch. The other thing I'm going to add too, so it's going to kind of look a little cobbish. Um, is I have taken some of the Verdure um, mini rose or a small rosemary focaccia and we cut that up, diced it up and toasted it off to make croutons. And what I love about this too is having that really nice rosemary flavor in contrast with the brightness of the tomatoes, the smoked of the Caesar salad. It just adds a little extra note of complexity to it as well. So I'm going to put some of those there so the person can, that's getting it can just mix it as they go. And oh, a piece of resistance, a Parmesan crisp, of course, why not? See, this one's going to travel much better, not like my sandwich. So you can see we've got a lovely little bowl there, that smoked dressing, and a lot of different textures, thanks to Oli Mel and Bredor. Um, So we've done our seasonings, which of course can bring a lot of flavor. Um, the other thing I want to mention too is there is a difference between flavor and seasonings as we're talking about scratch cooking. Seasoning, of course, is usually salt and pepper and helps elevate fresh raw ingredients. Um, seasoning, uh, flavoring is when you're actually adding a new flavor to something. The beauty of these, depending on what you use and how you use it, could actually kind of do both. So I've done it with a tomato sauce where I've added the deep the earth, which is the mushroom one. And all it did was really add that umami note to it. It didn't take away from the tomato sauce. It just gave it a deeper flavor to it. Or adding something like smoke where you taste it, right? So there are options, saves you a lot of time, and a really clean, natural product that you feel better about using. And of course, they're all gluten-free and vegan, which doesn't hurt either. So the last item that I'm going to make is a tostada. And I already have my pan heated up here with a little bit of oil, and I'm using the Ali Mel uh, fajita chicken strips, which I've diced up, and I have some black name seasoning that I've done here. So I'm gonna add it straight to the pan. So already pre-cooked chicken, saves me a lot of time. Just like I just threw everything in together. With this, I'm gonna let it go a little bit more, and I'm gonna add some of the citrus fresh of our Nor Intense flavors. So this one, of course, of course, has yuzu, Persian lime, and mandarin orange in it. And this one does not have as much of that, that salt coming through, so you can also use it for cocktails, you could use it for desserts, and especially when you can start advertising things as yuzu flavored, uh, Persian lime flavored, without actually having to buy those fruits, makes a massive difference. Saves, of course, a ton of money. Um, so I'm going to do my Crispy little tortilla here. 
and I'm going to mix up some product. So I, of course, have used Hellman's Half the Fat Mayonnaise. You think about mayonnaise, and I really don't know how many people are making it from scratch anymore. I think because there are so many high quality mayonnaise on the market. The other thing too is there is a standard of identity, as I'm sure most people know, about what we can actually call mayonnaise. So when you see salad type dressing or mayonnaise type dressing, it just means that it does not fall into that category of the particular amount of oil that's required for eggs to make a proper mayonnaise. So of course, Hellman's real mayonnaise does fall within that. Nice creamy consistency and our benchmark, of course, is always scratch mayonnaise, but without the risk of splitting product with any sort of illness that might come along with raw egg yolks. If your product's not pasteurized, has a great shelf life, which is really is that flavor you expect. So here I've mixed it with a little bit of yogurt and a little bit of avocado. And I'm going to add the deep, the intense heat. So this is where I'm going to get that poblano flavor from. Now I like my spicy, so I'm going to add a little bit more. And just give this a little bit of a mix. And I'm going to spread it on the bottom. Oh yeah. The other thing too is I'm really enjoying adding mayonnaise, yogurt, whatever it might be to avocado, because of course, you know that it browns right away. This helps keep it nice and bright and green and you don't even need to add a ton. I'll often make an avocado mousse, if you will. When you put it through the processor, it gets quite fluffy. And the nice thing is, is that to a certain extent, the Hellman's mayonnaise can withstand more of that emulsification before it splits again. Um, so obviously not being able to do that with scratch made mayonnaise. So there's our citrus fresh right into our chicken. Oh yeah, that blackening seasoning. All those flavors coming through, I'm getting nice and bright. Um, I am going to put down a little bit of shredded lettuce on this. I do love me some iceberg. I haven't had it in a while. So we've got the lettuce. We're going to do our olimel, citrus, blackened chicken. Super, super easy. All right. If you want to fall off, you fall off. Then we have some pickled red onion, some radishes. So let's just get some color going on there. Do a nice little stand up. All right, here we go. Color, nice summer dish. Nice and easy. Maybe not the best to share. You should each order your own, but nice bright flavors to it. Of course, I've got some cilantro here because what would a tostada be without cilantro? And the other thing I'm going to add on here, just because I can, no, it's not more mayonnaise, is feta cheese. Or if you had some sort of fresh Spanish queso, that would be lovely as well. But quite personally, I enjoy the feta just because of the saltiness. So now we have our tostada here uh, with a really creamy, great sauce that was easily made and our chicken that was enhanced with our more intense flavors. So, you know, we've got everything we need here. It's just about how you prepare and care for the product. That's perfect. Thank you so much, Kyle. And what's what I noticed through your presentation here you know before and i i felt this way before too but before i onboarded with cisco and i learned what's out there and i, I learned about your products uh, at unilever to me anything that was ready to use was very one-dimensional and it was uh i treated it like well it's below me and the, the food that i want to make and when i look at what you've put together there uh some of the complexity to the the, the flavorings i think that a lot of restaurants wouldn't be getting that type of flavor if they were like trying to make it from scratch anyway they wouldn't get there and so now you're putting out this incredible product that's saved you time it saved you money and everyone's going wow like this is such a, a great interesting dish and yeah. you're sitting in the back going like it's it's not killing us to make this i think that is you know right there that's the epitome of what rtu is because what you put together there shows well the flavor uh is going to be incredible like thank you for sharing that with us of course, and I just did want to say too, because this is my thing that I love, but overlapping products. Like I didn't, I didn't really just, I mean, I used this once for this demo, but everything else I used multiple times 
So you know you're going to go through product. It's not just sitting there, but three very different dishes, right? So, yeah. And another thing I see looking at products like this, I see the opportunity. You know, I, I hope we're going to get back to. I know we will, but back to uh, it being in the dining room. Uh, but at the same token, to transition your menu into uh, other opportunities like ghost kitchens and other revenue streams, you can transition it very easily using any of the products that have been shown today, whether it's yours or uh, Catherine's or what Chef Mark did. Like that's what I see too is having alternative revenue streams coming in from from making these key decisions on uh, RTU products. Okay, Kyle, thank you again. Uh, in the sake of time, everybody, uh, we're well we're well past, and I appreciate everyone sticking around to to see the final uh, demonstration here. I want to thank everybody. Uh, thank you to our all our panelists, and thank you to everybody who was a guest today and signed in. Thank you to anyone who's returning from our first uh, at the table webinar. And I just want everyone to know that our next webinar is going to be August tenth at nine thirty. And we're going to be talking about uh, contactless restaurants. So again, we're we're focusing on uh, the change in our industry. So uh, please come join us August tenth. And uh, as well, if you didn't, if you want to share this with uh, friends and colleagues, this will be going up uh, eventually in the next couple of days, I believe, to the Cisco Canada YouTube website. And as well to anybody who signed in today and joined us and, and was registered. In the next couple of days, we will also be sending out a package, a digital package, just kind of recapping everything we learned today and with a few extra uh, add ins as well. So, thank you to everyone who attended. Thank you to our panelists and Jeff. Uh, there was so much good information. We didn't have a lot of time to talk food, so we're going to have to catch up, uh, catch up a little more later. But thank you so much for, for co hosting with me today. Anytime. Thanks for having me. Okay, thank you everyone. I think we'll uh, we'll leave it at that and I hope to see everyone again August 10th at 9:30 uh, for our next uh, at the table webinar. Thank you guys.